Now then, the final thing that we need to complete here is going to be our additional info component, which is going to have the additional information on some weather stats here for this city or the current city that we're in. Now we're going to put this right below the weekly forecast component here. And what this is going to look like is if we come to our finished application, we're going to have the sunrise, the sunset, the humidity, the cloudiness, the wind speed, and also the pressure. All right, so let's head over to our view project and get started here. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a new component. So we'll say additional info. And then let's go ahead and create this view template here. So what we're going to do here to start is we're going to create a div with the class of additional info. And we also want to toss the container class on this as well. So for now, I'm going to leave that as is. And we're going to give this a name. And we're going to call this, let's see here, additional info. All right. And then let's finally go ahead and create these style tags here to be the SCSS scoped. So to get started, like we have always done, let's go ahead and first import this into our weather component here. So we're going to copy this down, additional info. And then we want to link it up to that component in that file path. And then lastly, let's go ahead and actually put it inside of our components here. And then we need to insert it here inside of our weather wrap. Now, for this component, we're not going to be using forecasts. We're actually going to be utilizing the current weather uh, data here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this V bind here on the current weather. And I'm simply going to store it here in the additional info component. Now what we can do is head back to our script tag here and we're going to accept this as a prop. And I believe it's current weather. All right, so now we should have access to that. Now if we head over to our project, we're not going to see anything because we have nothing inside of this uh, component just yet. So let's begin to actually create our uh, component here. So we're going to start with the markup, and the first thing I'm going to do is create an empty div. And inside of this empty div, we're going to have the first uh, statistic here, which is going to be our sunrise. So I'll put a span here to hold a title. And then below that, we're going to have another span here, and we're going to store that actual uh, info from our API. So actually, this is show you what we're going to be using here for the um, from this current weather data, I'll just, I'll go ahead and log us out of the console. So we'll say create it and we'll say console dot log this dot current weather, just to show you where I'm getting these from in case you are a little confused. So you can see here that the additional info component is outputting this, uh, to the console. So if we head into the SYS, which is an object, it's going to contain the sunrise and sunset values. So this is where we're going to get those two from. So what we need to do inside of this span, we're going to create a new, and we're going to, actually, we've got to do our curly brackets. We're going to say new, and then date. And inside of here, we want to pass this dot current weather dot SYS, and then we want the sunrise. And now we need to times this or multiply it by 1,000. And then we want to convert this to local string and inside of here we want to pass the value of en us and then we want to pass it an object and for the this one's going to contain the value or the name of time style and we want to set this equal to short so if we save this and head over to our uh, our application you can see now at the very bottom we have that sunrise value. So our component is hooked up properly and we're able to communicate with that data from our API call inside of this component. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is I'm actually going to copy this down because it's gonna be very similar. We want the sunset. So we're gonna change the span tag to sunset. And then instead of saying this.currentweather.sys.sunrise, we're gonna change this to sunset. And we're gonna keep this two local string, the same thing, ENUS, and the time style we want to set that to short. 
All right. So next up, we're going to create one for the humidity. So we're going to create another empty div here with no class name. We'll have a span. And this one's going to be humidity. And then we're going to create another span here to hold that value. So we need our curly brackets. And we'll say this dot current weather dot main and dot humidity. And that does not need to be capitalized. All right. And then next up, I'm just going to copy this down because these are all going to be the, uh, the same kind of structure. We want to do cloudiness. And we'll go to the current weather object and we'll say clouds and we're going to get the all. Okay. And then let's duplicate this one more time. Actually, we're going to need to do it two more times. So now we want to get the wind. And now for this one, we're actually going to pass it the math.round because this also returns a decimal and we want a whole integer instead of a decimal. I think the decimal just kind of looks weird. So what we're going to do here is how we always have done. We're going to say math.round and then we're going to pass it this string or this, uh, this value right here. But instead of saying clouds at all, we want to get the wind dot speed. All right, and then let's just go ahead and copy this one up here because we don't want to get that math that round. And this is going to be the last one here, and this is going to be pressure. And actually, uh, what I noticed here is we forgot to put the uh, indication of what this is. So we're going to be doing a percentage for the humidity. We want a percentage for the cloudiness, and then we're going to say miles per hour for the wind. And then for our pressure here, we first want to change the path here. We're going to say main, and then we want to get that pressure value. And then this is also going to be actually not, a, it's not also, it's going to be HPA. Not sure what that stands for, but that's what I see in that this value is measured in. Okay. So if we save this and head over to our component here, you'll see that we have all the values here that are from our um, API call of current weather. So we have sunrise, sunset, humidity, cloudiness, wind, and our pressure. So that's all working great. Now let's go ahead and work on the styling. Let's begin here with some line breaks to open up the style tag up. Now this section for this markup is actually going to be pretty easy in regards to the CSS here. So what we want to do first is we're going to target our additional info. And what we want to do here is give this a padding of 30 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 on the left and right. We're going to display this as flex. We want to give this the property of flex wrap and set that to wrap. And then finally here, the last thing on this class is we're going to give it a color of white. So if we save that, you should see now we don't have any changes. That's probably because I spelled the additional info wrong. Let me see here. I bet you I did any money. Yep. And that makes sense. I am horrible at spelling if you haven't noticed throughout this series. Okay, but that is all fixed and you can see now it looks like this. So let's continue on here. Now we want to target all the divs inside this additional info. So what we can do here is we can say the, I think this is the greater than sign and we're going to say div. So it's going to target all the divs inside of here and we're going to say display flex, set the flex direction to column. We want to set the flex basis here. And, and this is going to be how much each one of these divs will take up. So we're going to say 50%. And then we want to give each one a margin bottom of 20 pixels. So what this is going to do is going to put into a two uh, column, I guess you would say two column row. So that's starting to look better. Now, the next thing we want to do here is inside of these divs, we have the span. So we can say using pseudo selectors here, span, nth, and I did that wrong. Sometimes this uh, shortcut comes uh, not in so much handy when it starts auto populating for you. So we're gonna say span nth child, we're gonna say one. And what we wanna do here is give this a font size of 12 pixels, and we're gonna give it a margin bottom of eight pixels. Okay. 
Now we want to also target our second span here. So we're going to do the same thing and we're going to say span nth child two. Now for this, we're not going to change anything besides the font weight and we're going to change that to a much bolder font and we're going to give that a value of 600. Okay. Now the final thing that we want to do is because we're giving this a, a margin bottom of 20 on all the divs, you can see here now that we have all this extra space on the bottom of this component. Now we don't want that. So what we can do is we can say div nth child and we want to grab the fifth one. Oops, hello. Five. And then we also want to grab the sixth one here. And what we're going to say is we don't need that comma there anymore. And all we want to do is set this margin bottom to zero. And you can see now that's going to get rid of that extra space at the bottom, which makes the application look a lot better. All right. So that is going to be our additional info. Now, if we head to any city, we will have that um, component. And that is going to do it for our weather view here.